now to the Champions League final. Graham Hunter, good morning to you. How are you? That's grand, yeah. Uh, Real Madrid, right? The situation at Real Madrid is that they have had a really interesting season where the league has been a bit of a coronation. Some of those younger players have really started to mature. We've seen their older players wrestle their form back. And over the course of the year, we had expected big transfer news coming in. Something was going to happen somewhere along the way. Their dream was to unite the best young strikers in the world. And all of a sudden, when you're trying to dance with everybody, it's one of those situations where you end up dancing with nobody. What's going on? Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. That's a real Jackson Pollock painting of the Mbappé. It's Mbappé you're referring to, right? Well, yeah, yeah. But they they definitely they were they were in the Haaland stakes early in the race, and obviously uh, it it didn't. Yeah. Look, 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 look. We've been we've been there before, where um, Real Madrid wanted Ronaldinho, but said to him, "We're not quite ready. Will you wait for a year at Paris Saint Germain?" And and it failed. He was ready to go. He went. He nearly went to Manchester United. Peter Kenyon screwed that deal up. Bossa pinched him. Um, they transmitted when Mineralo was still alive. They transmitted to him that they that they wanted to take Mbappe now on a free and then Haaland the following season. That was rejected out of hand. They put all their eggs in one basket. A basket where you know you, you given that Mbappe had um, Zidane and Cristiano Ronaldo as his as his two principal heroes growing up and he came to Valdebebas age 12 to train and the the board of directors then while Florentino Perez was on his sabbatical when he, he, he gave up on his galactical project and, and felt he'd failed and went away for about just, a, just about two and a half years um Mbappe was there. He was training for them. The coaches said then, when you know it's just about ten years ago, this is this is an exceptional youngster. We must sign him. Sixty mil was the the price. They wouldn't fund that. They thought they were getting him, you know, a, a couple of terms ago by spending big money. He decided to stay. They thought they were getting him now and freedom of contract. If you were if you were offered a straight choice without the the, the benefit of hindsight now when it's all gone to you know it's all gone to crap, you, you probably would put your your bet on Mbappe if you were Florentino Perez. You know he's enamoured with the club. You've had an agreement in principle with him with just about everything except for free, human free will thrashed out from about September October. If you want to argue the the, the 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 various merits of Holland and Mbappe and say, well, you know, they really screwed up by not dumping Mbappe four or five months ago and just going for Holland and saying, splash, there's the buyout. You know, Erling, we think you're the best. Come to us. Never mind Manchester City. If, if that's what you're arguing now, then it's a it's a slightly egregious use of, of hindsight because Mbappe was the outstanding candidate. And Far be it from me, in, in over the 20 years that you and I have been talking on your show, it's rare when I've been saying, yeah, Florentino Perez is right on the money. I've often expressed admiration for him. I've often expressed awe of his achievements. And more often, I've been critical of some of his stances, some of his behaviours. But when he and Javier Tebas say, hold on a second, the, you know, the, 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 the playing field is tipped exactly against us because we can't splash out hundreds of millions and we 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 don't have the the complete autonomy to do precisely what we want within the club and 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 to, to literally change financial history then you know they are talking about a Paris Saint-Germain who was able who were able to do the most extraordinary things offer the most extraordinary amounts of money to Mbappe in order to persuade him and I'm a little bit disappointed that somebody who works around La Liga and, and thrives on beautiful, intelligent, athletic, dangerous footballers coming to that country, I'm a little bit ticked off that he isn't going to be playing in Spain and devastating all Real Madrid's opponents. But it is it, it was an extraordinary tactic that the Paris Saint-Germain used in order to persuade him at the la last minute after his mum's visit to Qatar and all the, the, the financial and political pressure that was put on the man. I, I wish Mbappé had decided differently. I don't think it's massively healthy for 
um, f- the football outside Paris that he's made this decision. But if you're saying, well, listen, Real Madrid really screwed up by not 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 pumping Mbappe a few months ago and going, let ah, let's cut our losses and go for Haaland, then. For once, I'm not with you, Jared. It's more, I suppose, that they've ended up not getting anything that they wanted, and that's very unusual. Like, uh, I don't really remember a time where uh, maybe that Ronaldinho example is is the most. Uh... Ne- Neymar is the other one, Jared. Listen, I, you'll be able to say that that wasn't, you know, they weren't t- trying to kill two birds with one stone because Neymar was an individual project compared to what you're the, the case you're making right now about them wanting both the players, not being able to afford it, and and saying to one of them, "Please wait for us." But Neymar, remember, was was again like Mbappe, was on a visit to the training ground. They thought they had him tied up with Santos financially. Um, Neymar's dad's involvement was assured. Wagner Ribeiro, the agent's involvement was sure. Santos were willing to sell. Sandro Rosé came to power, ex-Nike executive in Brazil, came to power at uh, 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 Cap now, and, and gazumped them, snuck in the back and, and lied about how much Barcelona had spent and Goodness knows how much financial incentives were, were given to the, the parent, the, the kid, and, and the agent. But in that instance, Roman had comprehensively lost what they wanted. And one of the things I'll argue, and I, and I make no bones about repeating the fact that this is the, 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 the nitty-gritty of my ESPN column this, this week, the, the last time something like this happened, Roman had struck back. They, they, they hired a guy called... Uh, Jose Luis Calafat de, de Souza, and his name is, he goes by the name Juni Calafat. He, they, they made him, several months after Neymar joined Barcelona, they made him their Brazilian head of operations. He did so well, and they made him South American head of operations. Now he's really head of scouting and recruitment for Real Madrid. And, it, you know, the list of notches on the bedpost are, because he was told, get us the next Neymar, and the one after that. And, and and let's let's you know let's pump Barcelona in terms of scouting. Let let's pay Neymar back. Let's do better than them. That's what Florentino Perez's Empire Straight Strikes Back instructions were then. And they signed Vinicius, and then they signed Rodrigo, and then they signed Valverde, and then they signed Camavinga. Now you just named the quartet there who've been absolutely fundamental in winning the title and taking them to Paris this Saturday and. Okay, the Neymar incident took place in 2013, but but the backdraft of Florentino Perez striking back from that Neymar incident is still thoroughly being felt you know, eight years later. And the guys, the oldest of the guys I've mentioned there, I guess is, I mean, I, I'm not sure if I've already 23 yet, but you know they, they you know they range from 21 to 23. Uh, sorry, in Camavinga's case, they range from 19 to 22, 23. So in in theory, they're going to be powering Real Madrid for a long time yet. The, the power of, of what you're talking about, the power of the sting of embarrassment, can, can, that vinegar can be very big sauce. One last thing about the Mbappe uh, situation. Uh, it, it has largely been painted as a financial thing. I do wonder if perhaps the opportunity to be the power in Paris Saint-Germain is also something that is intoxifying for somebody who is as ambitious as Mbappe. Um, like... There was a slight blip in form, and then the form returned to the levels that. So it, it's clear that he is going to be able to deal with setbacks. You know, we, we've seen enough now in that short career, short but brilliant career, that he he's not going to be phased by the money. He's not going to be phased by any aspect of the celebrity or the responsibility. That like, you know, there's a possibility he's Michael Jordan esque over the next couple of years, and is the man who delivers yeah. and carries the team to Champions yeah. League glory. Uh, yeah, it's a good argument. It's a good. It's a. It's a. It's a. I buy your argument. There, there were any number of people about 13, 14 months ago who would brief you. It's. It has gone to his head. He's changed. He, <laughs> for for my taste, all that was happening was a juvenile was becoming a man, and all of us, when we reach that age of majority and then begin to get self-determining powers and self-confidence, can appear a little bit brash, a little bit more. Uh, wordy, a little bit more willing to impose our view. And I think, again, for my taste, that was always happening when the doomsayers, about a year and a half ago, well, Mbappe's changed. Well, of course he is. He's he's a multimillionaire. He's a world champion. And, he, and suddenly he's, instead of being 18, you know, he's 21 and a half, 22, currently 23. Your Jordan analogy, I like. Um, I, I understand that... Uh, you know, you didn't take the financial aspect out of your argument, and and that needs to be paramount. But selling in the dream of saying you'll be the power that takes this club, your club, if you want to um, 
to its first ever Champions League victory, that is that is a pretty toxic brew to be selling to a guy. I, I accept. I think, and I wish he'd considered that League One is not a preparation for winning the Champions League, and it's the odds are stacked against them. Now, if you're a competitor and and you utterly believe in yourself and you utterly believe in people who own the club, and they say, well, we will actually buy and develop in order to change that, and that we will be competitive. You can buy or not buy that argument. I think League One doesn't prepare teams to, to win the Champions League. And I think that dream will probably become tarnished. And I think, my estimate is, that Mbappe will leave Paris Saint-Germain vastly richer, will probably leave before the end of this renewed contract, in my opinion, and probably do so without having won the Champions League. Is blowing Barcelona out of the water in terms of recruitment of young uh, Brazilian players was maybe Florentino Perez's version of revenge over Neymar. What will his revenge look like for this? No, I, I, I don't know. If, if you want to put specifics on it, on, I, I wish I could reel off to you the list of... There's a guy called Endrick, a 15-year-old Brazilian that is apparently the number one on the radar in terms of the equivalency you're talking about now for the Empire Strikes Back. Mbappe version compared to Neymar version. But the reason that Juni Califat is... And people like him. He's, he's not the, the only man in the world who successfully scouts young players. Are, are so well paid, are so sought after, is that it, it, it doesn't take what I do, which is the great good fortune of travelling the continent to meet people and go to games or whatever. It takes an exhaustive sweeping of every um, network that you've got around the world. It takes br a, br a brilliant network to, to be established, just like Monchi has, for example, at Seville. And to, to be able to throw to you a clutch of exceptional 15, 16, 17-year-olds around the globe right now would be bluff on my part. And I'm not, you know, I'm not going to do that. But w w where I believe you can expect an answer to a question is version two. They went through version one, whereby th there were some failures. Again, I use the expression, nobody bats a thousand in the transfer market, particularly if you're buying exceptionally talented kids, because you can't do the same due diligence as you can on a 25 or 26-year-old and say, here's the character. We know the character. Because that character's going to change. You're going to Normally, you're going to transplant them from a different country and culture uh, and, and potentially from a different continent at aged, you know, FIFA rules suggest it should be at age 18 in some cases. And then to say absolutely we're, we're utterly clear on this person's um, ability to handle the pressure of working at the most political, most demanding club in the world, that's, that's not feasible. But in stage two, what they're much more um, aware of is, is how to prepare for bringing in a, a brilliant 18 or 19 year old from another country, another language, another continent, for example, they're, because they've done so successfully. They've, they've taken the careers of um, Vinicius and Rodrigo and Valverde, and currently Camavinga, who was slightly ahead on the scale because Ren had been playing him consistently for a couple of years in, in frontline first team football in League One. And therefore, I, I think he was more accessible horseflesh. But I think stage two, when they bring these, and, and this is how they will react, because they believe that the nation state clubs, you know, to name just a few, Paris Saint Germain, Chelsea have gone dropped off that list, but, but City and Newcastle will be in there. That, that their ability to, 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 to have endless funds probably means that Real Madrid need, now need to not do what they used to do, which was buy a Galactico, the best player in the world at 25, 26, 27, 28. And they've actually done a vault fast on that. It's it's a really interesting change of policy because the whole Galactico idea was the was the way in which Florentino Perez swept to power. It's the way in which he, he became the center of attention between 2000 and say 2005, six. But now it's it's kids. You now the kids are all right to quote the who as far as Florentino is concerned. And I think that Real Madrid are going to be better prepared to receive the kids that now flow in because they well, listen. Chalmany from Monaco will be the first answer to your question. Mm. They will buy Chalmany as an organising midfielder. Suddenly there'll be a player who can who can deputise for Casemiro, and Madrid will be a hell of a lot stronger for that reason. But where they where they go in the two hundred million that they've saved from a signing bonus to give to Mbappe immediately, that's more guessable than what will happen in the in the 
in the ripples in the in the pond from the Mbappe boulder thrown into the middle. And in uh, the year 2022, nothing bodes better for a Champions League final than one rival beating another to a signing. So the chow many thing bodes well for, for this Saturday evening and uh, pretty much well, weighted in Real Madrid's favour. Well, Salah's words too, yeah. We all have to thank Mo Salah for... You know, telling the truth when they won their semi-final and the next night's one wasn't sorted. I, I, you know, you, I, I haven't often done it, but I have done it in an interview. Who do you want in the draw? And players just, ah, oh, listen, it's all, it's, it's all difficult at this stage and I love you all. And Mo went, nah, 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 give me Madrid. And then he, once the semi-finals were sorted out, he said it again. And I was at the AXA training ground recently interviewing Klopp and he said, listen, the, these motifs will come out. It'll be talked about, but you don't go into a game looking for revenge. And this 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 spills over a little bit into the Chelmeny thing, I suppose. It, it does club to club, add a little bit of spice. But even though Ramos is absent, just the very fact that Mosala said what he said led to Fede Valverde the other day in a in a in a huge two page interview uh, with Mark, I think it was, going yeah. Yeah, he, Salah's put us down with these remarks. And he's Uruguayan, so he means it. That's not... He, yeah, you can grimace all you like, baby, but <laughs> Uruguayans are a different breed. When Fede Valverde bites back, he means it. I mean, it's if not... It's, it's me, elevating them, though. It's it's actually the opposite of putting them down. But I, I see if you're trying... If you're an elite athlete using any little bits of... Uh, you betcha, stuff. baby. Circle the wagons and they're all coming for us. They're all pointing at us. Let's get after them. What's going to happen? Look, um, I'll be sure by by um, Friday night, Saturday morning, because what tends to happen is you 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 listen to the words, you you, you feel the vibes, you you get the training ground reports. I, the first thing that will happen, I think, is that you could name ten of the eleven Real Madrid players now. Alaba is going to be fit as long as there are no training ground incidents between now and then, which you know happen. Then you could name ten of the eleven. The the, the last debate will be whether it's Valverde named as a, a third forward on the right but oscillating very distinctly between that and midfield or it's Rodrigo as an out and out striker on the on the right of the three that includes Vinicius on the left and Benzema in the middle so Madrid's team is known so Liverpool can plan for that there'll be minor adjustments um, I, I, I have to say that, that during the lead up when I watched the way in which there was a rope a trick played on sequentially Paris, then Chelsea, then City. My idea in sport is that rope a opponents means that eventually your legs go and you take one to the chin. And if Liverpool were able to play at utter full intensity at their absolute ferocious best, I'd have said that they entered Paris as, as favourites because Real Madrid don't particularly like that. But watching Liverpool recently, with the possibility that Thiago is out injured, with the gut blow that happened um, at the weekend, a magnificent show by Liverpool, just as it was by by City, but it's a gut blow. I I think it would be naive not to say that Madrid are are, are prepared. They, they I don't think they'll have lost a competitive edge. I I think that they'll have benefited a little bit from the rest. And from my opinion, Los Blancos by about a millimeter, probably go into the game as favourites. Okay, right. That's interesting. And uh, hopefully we have an all-time classic. Sometimes these finals can disappoint, but I feel like this one, it's coming close Shoot. enough to the rest of the season that yeah. it shouldn't. Yeah, yeah. Agreed. Uh, last question for you. Luis Suarez, where does he play football next season? Man. I wish I was sure. Um, I, I think his desire to, 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 to be powerful for Uruguay in the World Cup, which remains... You know, there's been talk about his retirement there, and he, for my taste, he, he'll try to make a choice that that leaves him absolute prime condition for a November December World Cup. The obvious thing for him to do is because he has craved this for a while is to go and play for Phil Neville. I, you know, I've said that a little bit backhandedly um, to go and play and live in Miami, and Phil Neville would be his coach. Um, look. It's feasible that he stays in Europe for a team that plays high up the pitch and presses and doesn't ask him to, to be doing multiple sprints and, and counter-attack football. He still has the, the physical ability and the finishing ability to, to look 
tremendous for a club that really dominates its rivals and plays high up the pitch. But if he can find that club, I hope that he stays in, in, in Europe. If not, it, it's it's long weeks. Inter Miami have been trying for him and Leo Messi for um, nearly four years now. So I suppose best bet Miami. My hope is not yet, Pistolero. Not yet. All right, Graham. Good stuff. Enjoy the game. Thanks a million, lads. Cheers for now.